Wonderful. Right. Well, welcome, everyone, to the inaugural uh, White Space Integration Showcase. Thank you very much for joining us and, and sparing some time for us to show you some content today. Um, the agenda has already gone out. Um, we're doing a number of customer uh, demonstrations, uh, as I've got on the slide now. I'm going to switch over to some Verisk uh, work that we've been doing recently. And then finally, I'll just take you quickly through the resource pack that we're going to send out to every attendee. So I just wanted to cover off a couple of important aspects, which is fundamental to integrations. Within Whitespace, just simply because of the way the platform works, we have a, a number of um, defined data items. OK, now these defined data items um, are typically stored as tags, but we also have a lot of structured data within just by virtue of the way the platform works. So for example, stamp, when the stamp goes down, we have a very defined data structure um, that, 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 is, that is recorded. And you can see that at a JSON output um, just, just in front of you there. Then we have the defined data mechanism, which is the tagging. So the tagging is where brokers and underwriters at request a quote stage can go in and, and, and add a tag. And then that becomes available as structured data and it's a very simple structure and I've got four examples here which pertain to the four tags that we've got in the screenshot on the right hand side and so the more tags that you add the more data you get back when you call us the data API um, so that's that's really important because that really helps you know the value um, that, that you're getting from these integrations so a lot of generic data but also um, augmented by defined data We've got 108 APIs and we've got 19 customers in production today. We've also got 42 customers in the sandbox split amongst brokers, carriers and third parties, as you can see there. So without further ado, um, I'll just cover off a couple of um, uh, comments I did want to make that I, I forgot. Um, we are going to be showing demos. They are going to be test environments because yeah, we can't be working in production, but just to reassure you that all the customer uh, demos you're going to see today are in production. Uh, we've got nine presenters, so please forgive us if there's a few glitches. It's the first time we've done this. Um, and we are going to do Q&A. Uh, or else if you could just bring up the, uh, the piece, uh, if you could. With the Q&A, we're, we're going to do it if we've got time. Um, but if we don't have time, we will take all your questions. I will divvy them up offline. Um, if you can please just record who who the question was for, or or the and or the name of 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 the segment. So if you've got a question after Kirsten's presentation, just pop in you know morning data or broker paths, and then we can route that. I'll collate the responses and we'll send them out um, in a week's time when we've we've got everything. Um, so open full screen to see the demos um, and also note that Axis Capital and Convex, they will be performing some actions as a broker. So it will be obvious that they are a broker when they're doing that in their narrative. Um, and I think that's it. Yeah, I think what I'll just remains to say then is, yeah, five broker passes in, in production today. They are what I call a deep integration. So they're bi-directional synchronization of data at multiple events in the placement life cycle. And they're a mixture of um, you know, custom and built passes and also commercially available pass systems. So without further ado, I'm gonna hand over to Kirsten Duffield to demonstrate the value seen by customers through the Novus to Whitespace integration. Over to you, Kirsten. Thank you, Lee. So I thought to start with, we would just uh, explain what it is I'm going to show you. Uh, it's going to be the integration piece between Novus's core platform and the white space placing platform. Uh, it, as Lee said, it's uh, bi-directional. So we're talking about taking a data first approach, uh, putting together what, all of the data that you need for this contract and sending it to white space to uh, set up a uh, policy, set up a contract for negotiation. The carrier may or may not have integration, but one way or the other, they will then uh, go ahead with the uh, negotiation and then sign down the return journey of the data back again. So 
We're going to start with a particular contract. Uh, the contract is going to have already been set up uh, for convenience of, of, of time. And yeah, we have already course, decided that this contract yeah. is going to be placed on white space. At this point, it uh, recognizes there is an integration and allows us to go forwards into the placing platform uh, instructions. When we bring up the screen, it will automatically read the templates that are available for the particular class, uh, for the particular country, uh, territory, or whatever the tags are that you have uh, set about on this particular template. So this risk is able to access these templates. I send the data to Whitespace and in the background, we will see, there we go, straight live, the new contract is uh, being set up. I've logged into Whitespace through uh, Nova, so I can equally be logging onto it uh, separately in a different window. So this is just looking at it from the perspective of uh, the uh, back office or the technician or the broker. I can then open this particular contract and what's easiest to see as to what exactly has happened is if we use the white space feature to say show edits, everything that is colored has actually come out yeah, of Novus and you can scroll through the entire contract and see all of the data that has been sent across. Much of this data, of course, uh, in preparation for Blueprint 2 and various other things coming down the pipe as CDR compliant. And if you recall from the diagram I showed you uh, originally, it also has the ability to do contract checking and making sure that all the data required for, say, for example, the CDR is there, but it could also be for contract certainty and various other elements. So we're, we're good to go to negotiate. And that, with the uh, beauty of integration, is that it is that simple. There is nothing more complicated. There's no uh, human interaction uh, in that process. It's all done. So we'll now jump forwards uh, into being able to do the return journey. So if I took, for example, in the white space, uh, white space list of contracts, and I took, for example, uh, this one, uh, which is at firm order, I could sign down, doesn't really matter. I have the ability to uh, now um, uh, create, an, create an action on this particular item. We've already got the integration set up, so we can go forwards into, sorry, I'm just not where I expect it to be, apologies. We're now going to sign down, there we go. I had one extra step to do in the uh, in the placing platform itself. And I can now open up the contract, take the action. Apologies, I'm expecting to see, perhaps Lee, you can direct me. I'm expecting to see the uh, integrations piece there. Uh, no, well, we've there working hours now, so we've only 35 to 37 hours. So 40, 40, 30, 38. There we go. Sorry, I must have just been a little too fast off the, off the blocks. <laughs> Apologies there. There we go. See the signed data into Novus, and that will actually now send the return journey of the data back again, including all of the written lines. So if I now return back and have a look at what that looks like for that particular contract, you can see that the carriers have arrived back with their signed lines item back into the PaaS system. And that is the integration. That is as a, a deep dive integration, which I hope shows you that not only can we do it in a very short period of time, I think we're under four minutes, including my uh, not uh, spotting the fact that uh, I was a bit quick off the mark, uh, and also for you to be able to see that the economies of scale, the efficiencies that are driven there, to be able to do a deep dive integration where data is truly being data first, and now the back office can take over, they can raise their transactions, debit notes and closings, and communicate with the market. So I'm dead on time with my five minutes allotted time, and uh, I'll hand back to Eurus and Lee. Great. Thank you very much, uh, Kirsten. That, that, that's fantastic, uh, and well done for being going first. Very, very good. Excellent. Thank you. So now we're going to move on to uh, what we call the headless use of white space APIs. So this is using the platform without going through the actual user interface itself. And so without further ado, let's hand over to Jose at BPL. Thanks, Jose. Uh, thank you, Lee. Um, 
so basically what I'm going to show you today is kind of how BPL uh, uh, being in this uh, specific niche of the market credit and political risk um, insurance, um, we receive basically, we don't quote um, in, uh, our policies on MRCs, so it's a bit uh, specific and many times doesn't fit typical insurance products. Uh, and so we receive 10,000 inquiries, uh, not PPL itself, but the whole market receives 10,000 inquiries a year um, that may, not many of those um, actually bind into a policy. Um, and basically that creates like a flux of information. Um, how we log things in our system is we have a kind of a workflow where we document our inquiries, we pr prepare the information, select the underwriters, and then we send that information typically over email. Uh, so we customize our systems to then be able to um, not only send information through email, but also uh, propagate that information via white space to specific underwriters as they come online on the platform. So in this case, this fictitious um, carrier uh, is our VPL carrier for testing today. Um, I can just show that how I can, from my own systems, never seeing white space, scan kind of the information I've populated before, just for the sake of time today. Um, I can publish that information to white space, similar to what you just seen. Oh, that's great. I got a notification error. Uh, of course, let me just uh, authenticate again. Uh, pretend you've never seen that. Um, and let me just press the green button again. Um, so at this point, uh, as you've seen before, the white space uh, risk is loaded on white space. Um, it's all fine. And now I can share it to the underwriter for them to provide their comments on it. Uh, please see the attached risk for our client and provide your best indication. Thanks, Jose. And now I'll show it to the underwriter. And all of that is happening through white space, leveraging um, over 20 different APIs from the ones that uh, Lee mentioned. Um, and at this point um, in our workflow, we uh, would be, let me just open here a different screen. Um, we would be awaiting responses from all those underwriters um, we wouldn't be sitting here, but we would be waiting for those responses. Uh, and right now, just to demonstrate uh, what that would be, um, the, the flux of information from us to underwriters and then back to us, uh, we just have a short clip that uh, I suppose Uros will put online and we can just uh, briefly watch it. Now when a broker records an inquiry within its systems using a standardized template. This data can be immediately extracted by the insurer via API technology, automatically populating the same data fields in the insurer's systems. This removes any need for the underwriter to manually retype data from emails. Uh, so as you as you just visualize, that's kind of a very simple explanation of what how an API works, but how specifically this API works and how we implement it in production um, with an underwriter. And so we are live and using it and, and ramping it up as underwriters come online. So in the meantime, um, uh, Akil kindly uh, pretended to be an underwriter and quoted uh, on this inquiry. And basically what we got back um, into our own systems was the uh, the comment that he was able to provide. Um, and certain pieces of information we extracted from that risk, such as the rate, uh, the line amount provided and the indemnity and some of the comments that we'll be able to then um, pass on to our clients. Um, and the same way we can for example, uh, consult the entire risk we submitted to Whitespace, including the comments that uh, Akil kindly made on that document. And I think with that, we kind of just show the um, the the end-to-end -end integration uh, between our own internal systems um, and um, the underwriter systems on the other side, uh, which can also leverage uh, all of those APIs. And so that is uh, kind of the trajectory we have into standardizing our um, digital data records uh, into all these uh, different London market initiatives such as Blueprint 2 um, and all of that. Um, I think that's the fastest I can make it, Lee. Um, 
if you are okay to take it over, over Great. to the next one. Yep. Great. Thank you, Jose. Great stuff. Well done. Um, yeah, that's fantastic. And I think if you go to the BPL uh, page on LinkedIn, you'll be able to see a, qu a few other videos with the underwriters and also the, the brokers talking about the benefits as well, as well as a really nice video where they show the many to many relationship through white space so many brokers to many underwriters. So, so do, do check out the BPL um, uh, LinkedIn uh, page. So we are going to just skip over one of our presenters having technical issues wouldn't be the same without without that, of course. Um, so we're going to go actually now over to Vega themselves. Uh, Vega are our integration partner. Um, and they're going to show us um, a, a, an, an integration they've built recently for, for a carrier. Um, and it focuses on the use of collaboration tools and, and the storage of uh, the contract PDF. Um, and so uh, I'll hand over to Luca. Thank you, Luca. Okay, thank you, Lee. Hi, everyone. My name is Luca, and it's my pleasure to be here in the name of Vega IT and to show you how integrations can unlock the full potential of Whitebase. So here at Vega, we have developed different kinds of integrations that automate our clients' workflows. And today I will show you one example of how integration improved risk management process. And although this example is simple, it shows how it brings a real value to our clients. So for this specific client, uh, they had a challenge with document management and they wanted to automate document management for specific underwriting events like the, when the line is written or signed or endorsement is accepted. So uh, previously all of this was done manually and required significant effort to locate and upload and then to notify all the relevant underwriters about this change. And this was not only labor intensive, but it also um, caused a lot of errors such as document duplication or missing documents. So uh, now we can see a demo of how this works in real life. And here in front of me, I have different risks at different stages. So I can pick one and write a line. So if I open a firm order and go to written lines, I can write a line. Let's make it 100% and use this then. Okay, so I can proceed with writing a line. And what's happening in the background is that Whitespace is generating a bunch of events and our integration is listening for th those events. And when specific events happen, like when the line is written or signed, it is triggering um, a sequence of other actions that work in the background. So first action is to get all the documents uh, from this risk, including attachments, and then to store it in the SharePoint. So here I have a folder with today's date. And in here, I would have different actions performed. In this case, I have line written since I did just that. And in there, I have all the risks that were written today. So um, here is the risk that I just signed. And here is the PDF of the risk itself. If I had attachments in this risk, I would also see a folder that includes all of these attachments. So this specific folder structure is done to, for this specific client, and this could be basically whatever you prefer. So um, now when all of this is uploaded to the SharePoint, I also got an email notifying me about this change. And here in the subject, I can see that risk was written, and in the body, I can see some basic information about it. So for example, if uh, this was not the written line, but endorsement accepted, I would see some additional information that are more relevant to the endorsements, like uh, endorsement reason. And also I have um, some information that can get me like summary of the risk itself. But if I want to see all the attachments and other things, I can go to the SharePoint directly and see all the files or I can go to the white space to the specific risk I wrote and see additional information if I need it. And uh, for this specific client, we had now uh, like multiple teams in the white space and each team had its dedicated email address. So when we are sending these emails, we are sending email to the group email address for that team. And then the copy of the email is uh, sent further to each underwriter uh, of that group. This way only relevant underwriters are notified about this change. And 
Um, also, I didn't only receive an email about these details, but I also received the team's message from a chatbot. So I have like summary of information like the risk ID or the type of event that happened. And again, a link to the SharePoint to see all the attachments. And this could be customized to meet your needs. Um, so this could be like specific logo, name, and all the details are customizable. So in this case, this is just a quick summary of the basic information, but it could be much more. And uh, so in this case, uh, we used SharePoint for storing documents, but this could be basically any document management system. So it could be OnBase, DocuWare, IBM's FileNet, or even data management cloud solutions like AWS S3 Bucket, Azure Blob Storage, and same is with Teams. This could be basically any team collaboration tool like Slack, Zoom, or even WhatsApp, if you prefer. So this specific solution offers several advantages to this client. Uh, firstly, it improves efficiency since so everything is done automatically. Um, then all the documents are stored in one place and they are easily accessible to all the underwriters and all the relevant underwriters are immediately notified through different channels so they can perform action immediately. So when we are developing integrations, um, those integrations are customized to solve each client's unique problems, whether it is data management or document um, generating um, reports automatically or improving compliance checks or something entirely differently. So we don't only help our clients implement those integrations, but also identify integration opportunities. And with that, I would like to conclude today's demo. Um, I hope you can see what integrations can bring to you and to your team. So thank you for your time. Lee? Great, yeah, am I back? I was wait to see my slide. Okay, great. Yep, thanks, Luca. Brilliant, great stuff. Um, okay, I just think it's just worth just uh, taking a moment here just to, to, to reiterate that, you know, Vega, we've, we've trained them on the use of our APIs uh, and they've gone through, we, we, get, we gave them three very complex scenarios to, to solve in a, in a sort of part of us approving them as a partner, an integration partner. But of course, they are a, able to do many different integrations, any system, most systems to most systems, I probably shouldn't say any, but you could see them as a, a broader integration partner for yourselves, as well as specialists in, in the white space um, APIs. Um, they got multiple skill sets and um, we'll send some information on exactly, uh, you know, a, a lot of information about them. Um, right, okay, so now we're gonna go switch to the end of the placement life cycle. Um, we've shown you quite a lot of stuff that's relevant within it. And, and you know, Luca did mention I I endorsements in his presentation, but we're now gonna switch uh, to focus on uh, endorsements and what uh, value Convex are seeing from, from their recent work. So over to you, Kieran. Um, we're coming in loud and clear? Yep. Fantastic. Yeah, so thanks very much, Lee. So I'm going to briefly show you a fairly simple integration uh, that's currently in production and driving benefit for our underwriters uh, and underwriting support assistance. So the ask simply was from the business, is there a way that we can make processing endorsements slicker and more efficient uh, where we receive them via white space? So to help illustrate the process here is a fairly simple uh, flow of put together. So we're interested in the endorsement process here. Um, and when the endorsement reaches the desired state in white space, um, our internal ingestion and orchestration pipeline will orchestrate calling several of the white space uh, APIs to export the PDF, acquire the underwriter reference, which is key for us internally to associate it to the internal record, uh, and then also acquire the endorsement follower uh, as well. So when we've got all that information, we'll then disseminate it internally to various applications. So we'll upload the PDF to Dropbox, uh, and then we'll disseminate the information to our onshore and offshore teams via Slack. Uh, and Gmail so that endorsement can be updated in the policy administration system. So in true Bleed Pizza fashion, here's an endorsement I prepared earlier. Um, so you can see here um, that we've put Convex as notified parties, just so I don't have to chop and change between uh, being an underwriter to have to agree it or not. So I'm gonna hit complete on this one now. Fantastic. As you can see here, this one's gone to a completed state. Uh, and now that I've hit complete on that, the 
Eve pipeline will be doing uh, one of several things. So we'll be exporting the PDF. Uh, and we'll also be acquiring the underwriter reference here as well, which is key for us. Uh, and we'll also be acquiring the follower type as well for this endorsement. So you may have noticed in the Miro that we had defined data in red. And if I go back to white space here, you can see that some of the endorsements we receive in prod are fairly low fatality and have very little tags in them. So this is reflective of what we see in production. Um, but actually, oh, am I coming in? Hello. Don't panic. Hello. Uh, hey, hey, sorry, Kieran. Yeah, you've I was talking to you. Uh, sorry, everyone. Just just give us a moment. Um, yeah, you've got to uh, reshare your screen, Kieran. I think you've accidentally unshared it. Don't don't panic. Take your time. Um, two seconds. Yep, As you okay. can see, yeah, you are you good, Uros? Have we got, or shall I tell a bad dad joke? Yeah, we've got here. Hey, yep. Uros uh, should be coming through now. Okay, no dad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see here. So when I hit complete and endorse on this one, so the Eva pipeline was ex exporting the PDF. Um, we then bring that internally to Convex, uh, and we upload to the Dropbox folder at its account level. So you can see KG Corporation here as the Dropbox folder which align to the submission in white space. And you can see here the endorsement that I hit complete on was uploaded to the Dropbox folder. If I just select that now, you should see the endorsement uh, and the inline attachment as well, which was aligning to the endorsement, which I just created just a moment ago. So you can see the inline attachment there. So in parallel to that, we would have generated a Slack to our onshore teams, uh, and that contains the follower type the underwriter ref, a submission name, and the status, plus a link to where we've stored that in Dropbox. Uh, and then additionally, we've also sent an automated email to our offshore teams, giving them the information they need to apply that in Eclipse. So again, um, Eclipse is our kind of policy administration system. So again, the underwriter reference document type and some submission information there as well. So we get around 40 of these for our property line of business each month, um, this process, prior to Eva getting involved, took around 15 minutes. Um, so this saves around 10 hours each month for our uh, for our onshore and offshore teams, which is a, which is a big win. Over to you, Lee. Great. Great. Thank you. OK, great. Thank you very much, Kieran. And well well done there. It's, uh, yeah, it's tough doing these demos, right? <laughs> so, OK, um, I'm now um, just... Um, yeah, go and just make a, just a couple of comment. Uh, Kieran mentioned uh, SQL uh, Eclipse there, um, Eclipse underwriting. Um, just just to let you know that we are obviously working on integrating our own products at Veris. You'll see some some stuff in a minute, but um, we're we're working to integrate WhiteSpace with our new underwriting platform, and it'll be going live uh, in in 2025. So the initial release will focus on the point at which the firm order is received by the underwriter. But obviously, over time, we will broaden out to other points in the trading lifecycle, such as requests for quote. Um, and, and we've done a, recently done a proof of concept on that and demonstrated it to, to several customers. So I think um, we will come back to Stuart and his underwriter uh, workbench integration um, shortly at some point through today. Worst case. We will send the, I'll put the video in as part of this video of the recording today. So you will get to see it um, hopefully today. If not, you will see it eventually. Um, so now I think it's worth saying we've done the, you know, a number of customer integrations now. I think the APIs are so comprehensive that we've actually got third parties who are developing new products with our APIs. And so I, I thought it'd be really good to, to show, show one of those. And so data pro are going to show us what they've done and the value they're delivering through integrating with microsoft office applications um, and they've just recently gone live with a with a top 10 broker so over to you sam thank you yeah thanks lee i just want to make sure that you can hear me lee if you're still there yes yep yep okay. i can hear you great okay well thanks a lot for the introduction um as lee mentioned we developed a product called white space for desktop 
And back in August of this year, as Lee mentioned, it went live with a uh, large broker and they're now using this product uh, to produce documentation that goes out to their clients. There's hundreds of documents that have gone out live uh, to date. So what I'd like to do is just bring you through a couple of the features that we've got here in the white space for desktop application. So to begin with, I'm going to click import for white space at the top. And it's worth noting that what we can see here is my contracts um, on my team from my white space account. Very easy to link your white space account with this application. I'm going to click the upload spreadsheet button at the top here. And what I'm going to see at the very top of the screen is all of my templates within my white space account that I can clone. So if I click US property, this template's already been set up, which I'm going to show you what the output looks like in just a second with defined data tags throughout the template. I'm now going to click browse for a spreadsheet and I'm going to right click on good data export and I'm going to click open just to show you what this looks like before we upload it. So please don't worry about the content of this data. The, the whole idea here is just to prove a concept that we're uploading spreadsheet data into white space. Now, each line that we have within this spreadsheet will end up creating a brand new white space contract in the platform. So as long as you have, as you can see, you've got various col column titles at the top here. As long as, for example, we use insured number and street as a tag within our template, this cell, for example, right here on row two, will be tagged in my contract I'm going to upload into white space. So I'm going to come out of the spreadsheet. I'm going to select good data export to upload. Right away at the bottom, we're seeing all of the, the rows within my spreadsheet. And just for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to select the first row, but you can do a bulk upload into white space. So essentially uploading the entire spreadsheet content into white space in one go. Additionally, we're developing kind of a, a phase two of the release of this product to be able to have the application sit on a server and listen to CSV or um, spreadsheets that may land into a folder, the system will automatically listen for those spreadsheets and upload them into Whitespace automatically. So that's good, for example, perhaps you don't have a, a system that can easily integrate with Whitespace or any other systems, maybe it's a legacy system, this application could fit your needs there as well. So I'm gonna click row two and click import as draft contract. And as you can see, it launches my browser automatically. And I'm going to click SkyJet Airways, which is the contract that we've just uploaded from Excel. I'm going to click the Show Edits button at the top, and we can see that the, the tag data placeholders have now been replaced with my spreadsheet content seamlessly. No rekeying involved at all. So the next feature I'd like to demonstrate is uploading a schedule of values onto the contract with Excel data. So I'm going to click the SkyJet Airways contract that we just created, as you can see here. I'm going to click Digital Contract. Now I'm going to click Upload SOV. Once again, I'm going to click Browse for Spreadsheet. Right click on SOV example, just to once again show you what the data looks like before we upload it. <clears throat> and as you can see, we just have some dummy aircraft, aircraft data here within my spreadsheet. So I'm going to select SOV example and click Open. I'm now presented with all of the MRC headings in my slip that I've just created. So I'm going to click Interest because that's where I want my SOV table to, to go. And we've got a few options at the top, one of them being create Excel attachments. So if I toggle that on, it will upload a copy of this spreadsheet automatically onto the contract. I'm gonna leave that off for now, but I'm gonna select interest and click upload spreadsheet data as SOV. I'm now gonna navigate back over to my contract. And as you can see, the table just instantly appeared there. So I didn't have to copy and paste it from Excel, just very quickly using the application, uploaded a spreadsheet, and you can see here it's now presented within my contract. The next feature I'd like to demonstrate is just building custom documentation using Word templates. So this application allows you to use all of your custom documentation templates that you, you may have within Microsoft Word. And instead of rekeying or manually keying data that lives in white space, we've automated that process. So I've selected SkyJet Airways. I'm gonna click build documentation at the top. These are the Word templates and so not the spread, not the white space templates, but my company Word templates that I've got. So we've got a utility that assists you in building out these templates. So I'm going to click quote slip template. And you've got a few options such as upload documentation, white space contract attachments. So the output 
uh, documentation can be uploaded automatically once it's produced onto the contract and you can output straight to a PDF as well. So I'm just gonna call this test as the documentation title and click build document. So as you can see, it's just built my document. Now, if you recall, this data originated from my spreadsheet and now we're seeing a, a custom document. In this case, it's just a slip. And you can see it's even got the SOV or the schedule of values that I uploaded from Excel. Now it's worth noting that you can uh, seamlessly bring across the entire line item content from white, your white space contract or even target defined data. So you can see the cover pages utilizing the defined data from my contract. So you can essentially create any documentation that you need, such as a certificate, a slip, anything that can utilize white space data, no rekeying involved. And as you can see with the click of a button, it produces this document. Now, finally, I'm gonna click create email at the top here. So I've set my contract and click create email. I'm presented with all of the MRC sections within my slip. If there was contract attachments, I'd see them here. And then very simply, I can click create draft email. Now, as you can see, it's just launched Outlook for me and it's attached a copy of the exported contract from Whitespace ready to be sent out to the client. So once again, just making use of another automation. And before we exit the email, you can see the subjects populated the insured and the UMR from Whitespace. Now, some other features here, um, which if you're interested, obviously feel free to get in contact with us and we can give you a more in-depth demo. But some features that we're gonna be releasing is the ability to edit defined data in a contract without going into white space. As you can see here, this is all the defined data that originated once again from our spreadsheet that you'll be able to edit. Also, you can upload contract attachments that may live on your PC, upload that straight onto the white space contract and download them as well. You can also communicate with underwriters or carriers on a contract using the chat function. You can view contract history and also contract stamps as well, straight from the application. So that's the end of the demo. I'll hand it back to Lee now. Thanks a lot. Great. Great. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. Well done. No, a lot to cover. Lots to cover. So, um, yeah, so now we're just going to switch into sort of the Verisk world and stuff that we're, we're doing within Verisk. We've got three three items as per, per the agenda. So, um, you know, in, in addition um, to, to the obviously the work we're doing with morning data, uh, uh, SQL underwriting, as I mentioned, et cetera, and a number of other things we're looking at in terms of integration, um, we are looking at combining rulebook with white space. And the reason we're doing that is because because of the, the rich set of APIs we have on Whitespace, we can actually control the workflow through rules. And so we've created a combined product between Rulebook and Whitespace, which we which we call Whitespace Automation. And, and so it enables you to implement some very topical um, capabilities without the need for you to do any integration work yourselves. It's a, it's a, it's a turnkey offering. So let me just um, talk you through. What it is. So we have white space. We have the you know, a very much simplified version of white space. Uh, request a quote, bindable quote. The bindable uh, quote is basically um, where we've got a quote with lead terms defined, ready for line quotes for lead and follow markets. And then obviously we've got our firm order. So what we've got is one service called appetite matching. What what, what we do is we allow the broker to select the markets and and obviously pass the risk profiles to a, an, a carrier service which within which service we, we've encoded the rules around their appetite. And so it's like, uh, yeah, online dating for specialty insurance. Um, so we can use that to, 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 to reveal underwriter matches for risks in an unsolicited way. So whilst the underwriter encodes the rules for their risk appetite, they're not actually there. It's all being done in the background. And obviously they can change their rules, but this is, this is uh, something that then you can, an uh, underwriter could highlight interest in a particular risk without having to do anything um, once they've done their initial rule, rules build. Uh, and I'll show you an example of that. We've also, oh yes, and it, and it can be triggered manually, which I'll show you, but it will also can be configured to be triggered automatically. So maybe at firm order stage, et cetera, et cetera. 
the other part of white space automation is what we call digital follow. And there's, there's a, a common set of outcomes that we've implemented, which is decline and refer. So as an underwriter organization, you can interrogate the data within the contract and issue a decline automatically. So underwriters can focus on, on other risks that they've definitely may have got appetite for. Or if there's something that's, you know, we, we may go for it, we may, we may not, we can, we can trigger a refer. So as soon as the underwriter lands into the risk, they're highlighted a concern, you know, maybe it's a limit, maybe it's a, a country location, a, a risk location. And so that's auto review. And that is common to a couple of other features that we built, which is auto quote and auto stamp. And they are very similar. They're just at the same automation, but at different stages. So if, if a bindable quote is received, you could automate the, the recording of some quoted lines, bindable lines, or obviously the auto stamp. If you receive a, a firm order stage, you can automatically write a line. And that's, yeah, auto follow. So explicit rules, and you can interrogate who the leader is, information about the risk, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we, I'll send a document about how this whole thing works as part of the resource pack. So without further ado, oh yes, sorry, I, I must have mentioned, yeah. So we're essentially building a digital marketplace uh, for both broker facilities, MGAs and, and managing agents. Now the broker facility is interested because you can, the, the rules of that facility can be encoded in a pseudo underwriter uh, uh, within a broking organization to highlight uh, where facilities are applicable. And we're getting a lot of traction that with three, three large brokers at the moment. Um, and watch out for the press because we're, we should be an announcement soon um, on, on going our first case of going live with this. Um, so, so keep your eyes peeled. So let me just uh, come out of there and go into the demo now. So what I've got here is I've got the broker on the left, underwriter on the right, and that's the lead underwriter. So if I basically just go into a draft risk I've prepared, um, I'm going to first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to fire off an appetite match. So let's request an appetite match. Okay. I'll submit that. So that, that's gone off. But let, let's now go in and, and that'll come back in a minute and I'll, and I'll show you the message. You can see the time now. Um, let's go in now and, and do an auto decline. So if I edit this contract and I know based on where, how the rules are configured, if I put in a 20 million limit, that's going to trigger an auto decline. So let's save that. And then that's show. Um, show for quote and then we, the automation we've got configured is against sql underwriter sql um, underwriter demo but be careful which one to select okay and let's show that and let's proceed okay right so that's that's gone off um now we've already seen a chat message come back on the internal chat Response. This is from the Appetite Match. We will offer 10% for a team called Terra Team by SQL Underwriting. So that SQL Underwriting is where that automation is enabled, and they've automatically offered an indication of of, of their their um, appetite for putting a line. And then also, what's happened as well is we've received um, on the external chat, so back from that broker, uh, sorry, back from that underwriter, a message to say. We're declining this, and the reason is the limit. And you can see the risk has been declined here. So there you go, the appetite match and, and, and your decline. Let's just get rid of that. Okay, right. How are we doing for time? Okay, so let me just go now back into that draft and edit that limit to something more palatable. Okay, and then let's go in. And mark as firm order. And then let's send that um, over to the leader. It's equal on the right leader. Okay. And a follower where this has been, the automation has been enabled. I'm just taking my time here, make sure I get this right. Okay. Proceed, leader, 50%. Now, I also know that we've configured the rules here for the underwriter just to only go with a 5% line on this. So if I put in anything different, we would get a decline. So I'm going to go with 5% because obviously I want to show you a happy path. 
but if anybody does want to see a more in-depth demo of this you, you you know where where we are okay so that's that's now gone off so we've got two markets there nothing is going to happen if we sit here all day nothing will happen but as you can see we've got that that lead underwriter here has now received that firm order let me go in here okay go to written lines okay um you will see uh there's no written lines but let's go and add a written line and this will then trigger the automation okay so we're, we've said 50 percent let's put in our reference okay 2024 now two things will happen when i hit submit and proceed you will see automatically instantly the lead line will go down and a few seconds later you'll see that auto follow line go down so let's do that so you'll see the two radio buttons here uh, uh will will well the first will 50 percent be straight away followed by a few seconds later the five percent and then you'll see the lines also on the right Okay, let's dismiss that. So there's the lead lines gone down and we just wait a few seconds for the automation to run. It's interrogating the contract and saying, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll put a line down on this based on the information I've seen in the, the risk. And there we go. There you go. So there's your auto follow. Um, now, what I thought I'd be cool to show you as well is a multi-line version of that. So I've pre-prepared a, um, a, a firm order with lots of markets on it. So let's go in now and put the uh, put the the lead line down on there. Um, okay, merchants go to written lines, add a written line, and then what you'll see is a lot of lines go down. Obviously, uh, let's put the fifty percent in. Okay, twenty twenty four, submit, proceed. Okay, now you'll see the lead line straight away. Okay, but watch all the other radio buttons fill up as this integration runs. There you go. There's another line come in and another one and another one. So as a broker, you can see this be quite attractive because you can just see all your all your lines being been put in in that auto follow route. Okay, I think we're we're good now. Uh, I think that's white space automation done. Um, we are now going to um, change to what we call assisted tagging. Um, let me just uh, flick across to that. I think Mark, you're going to share your 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 screen. So, what we've been doing recently is we've been looking at the application of LLMs, large language models like ChatGPT, for example, um, and how they can help our customers. And this is an innovation piece. This isn't in production. We're looking to get an early release of this into into our sandbox for some users to use um, in in the first quarter of next year. Um, and so, what we're trying to do is help our customers get that defined data into their contracts because we may have a contract which uh, is renewing with no defined data so we want, we want on renewal we want to get that defined data quota up because that means yeah more insights on the contract so you can explore automations uh, both within your own organization but also obviously as a marketplace so i'm joined by mark barton who's enterprise architect at various sequel and we are going to talk you through the uh, assisted tagging. Oh, if gay mark, let's go. So yeah, in, this is the insured line item. This is a simple example. So we click the auto tag uh, action, and the LLM has suggested that yes, I, I've re it's recognised that entity as Fast Research Limited amongst that text that's in that MRC heading. And Mark's going to click include that and apply the tag. And then you'll see the luggage label has gone blue. So we can see that. And if we go into edit, you will see. There we go. The tag has been applied. So that's great. Uh, so something a little bit more, more, more advanced. Let's go into the period and auto tag that. Um, and you will see as we come up. Yeah, the multiple tags have been identified there. And obviously for this case, we've, we've got an include all. So we're just going to hit include all and apply the tags. OK, great. Um, now, what we can do as well, we can remain in the assistant and we could we can work on other under the line items. So if we go in now, Mark, and we do the uh, what we say we're going to do. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So we've now called up the address and we can see the address fields include all and you can actually do apply and edit. So you can apply the tags and then go straight into edit mode. And there's all the tags there. Fantastic. 
So that is assisted tagging. Now, what we've done there is we, we, we're, we're driving it from the line item by line item. And the reason we want to do that is because we want to make it a manageable amount of information for, for users to review, because the onus is on the user to accept the suggestions. And, and so that, that's really important. However, when talking to some, some customers, um, we've, we've identified another use case, which if you give me a second, if you could switch back to me, please, Uros. That would be great. Uh, now, where we go? Yeah, this is a concept of contract tagging. So yes, we showed line item driven, but now this is where we say, well, actually, there's a there's a set of tags across the entire contract that we want to tag, and so this this is a, a it's just a proof of concept that we've done here, whereby we will hit. Um, extract tags on a pre-configured set of tags across the contract. This might be driven by a template uh, or it might be a separately managed list. And there you see we've got all of our tags, but across the entire uh, contract. Um, so these are the tags we're interested in. Um, and you can see there's no nothing tagged at the moment. And we'll go through our usual process um of identifying the tags and what you notice here as well it's, it's actually found the pages as well i'm not sure if, if everyone's familiar with the paging mechanism but if you've got two sets of values like on the risk code you need to put them on separate pages and you can see we've applied the tags and that has picked up the pages and the tags successfully so yeah so we've got byline item or, or or across the whole contract okay and that is that i am going to now hand over to Nick if I can bring up the right window <laughs> I did um, also I did I did prepare a a, a slide and this will go out in the pack of uh, of the assisted tagging um, just explain the high level architecture um, okay Nick you are going to do uh, let me just get my notes. Yeah, uh, some great uh, work we've done uh, recently on premium processing. <laughs> Over to you, Nick. Cheers. Great. Thank you, Lee. And I can see that's come up. I'm really excited to introduce everybody to Whitespace Payments, which is running in prototype form at the moment. But this is an add-on to the Whitespace platform that allows brokers, underwriters, and your clients to essentially eliminate all of the time and money you will spend trying to reconcile premium figures that don't match because you're all entering information into different systems. And the way that's done is through using the data that you've already seen that exists in a white space contract, in particular that defined tagged data. And what you're gonna see is us raise an invoice, collect money from our client and settle it to the market, all without rekeying a single piece of information anywhere. So what we have here is a white space contract with that defined data within it. Obviously, most importantly here, the data that pertains to processing a premium. So we've got all of our premium brokerage, tax, period, order data, and so on tagged. And what that then allows me to do is send this to payments using this button here. Now I would be entering my client's details here, but clearly, you are uh, only gonna be able to see this if I enter my own details. So for the purposes of this, just assume that I am the client and I will enter my details in here, but this is who is gonna be paying the invoice ultimately. Now, when I submit this, I'm gonna switch over to my second tab that I've got open here. And what you're looking at now is white space payments. And with a refresh of the page with any luck, our risk lock and lofty investments has come through. And what we are introducing at this stage is a con concept of a shared premium advice note. So both the broker and any underwriters on this risk, in this case, it's a simple risk with a single underwriter writing 100%, Aegis in this case, will have at the same time a shared premium advice note to review, which is based on the data that's come straight from the contract, that tagged data. So if I come into here, and click here what we're looking at now is the shared premium advice note or span which is giving us a breakdown of our premium and that has come straight from the contract so broker and underwriter are simultaneously looking at this information they know first of all that the other is looking at the same information as them and they also know that this information has come straight from that contract without being rekeyed 
So everyone's on the same page immediately. Now, what you probably have at this stage is someone in your technical accounting department coming in and agreeing to these figures. So we have an agree button here, as you can see, and I can agree that on the broker side, which will update to agreed. And if we come over to our underwriter, they will have, as I said, the same span. So I come in here again, just verify those numbers, which are obviously identical, and I will also agree. Now, when I agree this is the underwriter, what we have set up is an automation, which is going to actually issue an invoice to our client automatically. So you'll see our status updates to agreed there. I will flick over to my Outlook and pray that I don't get any sensitive emails through in the next 10 seconds or so that it should take this to come through. With any luck, there we go, you will see a new email has dropped into my inbox. So a reminder that I am the client at this stage and we have an invoice that's been sent to us. Again, no re done straight from that data that's being fed through from the contract that's now been agreed by our broker and our underwriter. If I click this make payment link, what that's going to take me to is a payment portal, which essentially is using a payment aggregation, payment provider aggregation service. All that really means is that we're able to provide your clients with access to multiple different methods of payment so that they can pay their way according to what suits them. Or you could conceivably connect to a specific payment provider's APIs. In this case, we have set up a dummy visa card in my name. And I can only dream of being able to submit expenses this large on a company card, but I'm going to fill in the details here, which are going to allow us to make this payment. And as I do this, it's important to note that while this is running as a prototype and clearly I'm not making a real life payment here, the software and the technology that we're using absolutely is live equivalent software that could make a real payment if we wanted to make one. So this is a genuine dummy payment that's going through as a visa payment. And once I pay this, hopefully you'll see this update to payment received. And I can now come back over to our uh, broker's payment screen here. And if I just refresh the page, that will allow this to have updated to show me that our carrier agreed. And we have a separate screen here, this invoice screen. So coming in here, you'll see a couple of buttons. We have a collect button that's now grayed out. So if I hadn't had that automation running, I could have come in here to manually trigger that invoice to go to the client when I wanted it to. Because we have that automation and it's gone automatically, I don't need to do that, which is why it's grayed out. The second button here, the distribute button, becomes available upon receipt of those client funds. So because you saw me make that payment, the broker has now received those funds and the distribute button is obviously what will allow me to then distribute those funds to any markets who are on the risk. So by clicking this, you will see the status there update to distributed and just to prove that I'm not making this up, I will come back into our carrier and you will see we now have a distributed status on their side as well. Now with the final few seconds, obviously what I've shown you there is a very simple example, one underwriter, 100%. But we do have another example in here, which is a much more complex example, just to show you that this software can cater for more complexity. So here we have multiple underwriters on the risk, multiple sections and multiple premium installments. And it would be the same process in that each underwriter would go in and agree their part of the span to their for their proportion of the risk. And some other things you can up then, all I was gonna go on to say here is that you can see we've got some more complexity going on on this particular risk where we've got a less than 100% order. We've got a premium that is more than annual, 18 month, and we're prorating that premium. We've got a couple of different taxes in this case, an addition and a removal of a tax and those four installments, which you can see aren't equal. So just an example there of how this payment software can cater for, for more complexity. Um, we are looking to speak to brokers and underwriters who might be interested in this. So get in touch with myself or, or Lee or your account manager if you're interested in hearing more. But Lee, back to you. Great, thank you. Um, yeah, great. So, yes, everyone here. Could you share my screen, please, or us? Thank you. Great. So, just a quick um, about Q and A. We've we've collated all your questions. We will give you responses to all your questions. I'll direct them to the relevant speakers, as I said at the beginning. Um, I wanted to focus on content today, and hopefully you you, you can see the value in that. Um, but we will definitely respond to you uh, as soon as I've got all the, collated all the responses. Okay, so I just wanted to very quickly talk about resource pack. Um, we will be sending out to all the third parties and customers API documentation, swagger listing, uh, an article on APIs in specialty insurance, the, obviously the recording and the responses to questions. Um, 
Customers will also receive uh, a nice one pager on defined data and numbers, the benefits of defined data and numbers. Also some statistics on template adoption, which is the key thing for defined data. And then white space automation solution overview, which I mentioned to you previously, and, and the Vega pack on, on what they do and how they might be able to help you and your businesses. We will also be sending to the customers classes of business by broker and class of business by underwriter. So you can see the overlaps where you might want to, to collaborate in the sandbox. Um, and then uh, just to offer up to underwriters, if you want a, a report on all the defined data you're getting through risks that have been cloned from templates from the brokers, let me know and, and I can give you that report because we recognize that you, you want to start somewhere and, and having that. And it also gives you the volumes of business that you get through those templates. So those two factors to help you decide perhaps where you would like to start your integration journey. Um, the stuff in green will come out this week. Uh, the stuff in orange will take a little bit longer to collate the Q&A mainly. Um, and then obviously the red thing about the uh, uh, tag analysis is just on, on demand. Uh, and just contact your, if you could do request that through your account manager, that would be fantastic. So just closing remarks. I want to, I want a phrase just kind of just for you to remember that, that we'll kind of summarize what we've covered today. And it's the word train. Yeah, so tags aren't only uh, the sort, aren't the only source of structured data. There's lots of structured data in the platform. Reach out, form the collaborations in the sandbox. There is a whole marketplace in the sandbox. Get playing, get creative, get building those automations, go and experiment. And what hopefully you've seen today, unfortunately we didn't show the, the underwriter workbench, but we will include that. Um, you can start anywhere in the placement journey. There's no right or wrong answer as to where you start. And as Kieran showed you, with no tag data in endorsements, he's still de deriving value, as I say, partly because there's a lot of structured data outside the defined data mechanism. Iterate, start small. I'm sending an article about APIs in specialty insurance. It covers that and a recommended potential approach that you could take in your organizations. You could start off with a handful of, of data. Um, and start now. You know, the, If you start now with those defined data endpoints, pulling in the defined data that is available, if, if another tag is introduced into a template subsequently by the broker, if you've already built that a con if you're already consuming that defined data endpoint, you'll progressively get more and more data through it as the brokers add to, to, to their templates. So build that now, be ready, and then you can bring it out. So, okay, there, that's, that's uh, basically what I wanted to say. And I thought I would finish off with a quote from Steve and Catlin. You know, Digital is the only way to go. In the next five years, firms who don't embrace change will be left behind. For those firms, it will be too late. So the train is leaving the station. Don't hang about, get in touch, and we'll get you started on your integration journey. Thank you to all those attendees today. Apologies you've run over. Um, we'll fix the recording for the dropout that we had at the end of Nick's uh, presentation. Um, and yeah, if we could just bring all the presenters on stage, please, Uros. Um, I just like to say, obviously, yeah, thanks to everyone who attended today. Um, but also, if, as, as they all appear, thank you to our brilliant presenters. Is that everyone? Yeah, thank you, everyone. Luca, show us your face. <laughs> thank you, everyone. Uh, and we'll see, we hope to do this again as, as we build out more and more integrations. So watch out for the next session. And finally, Uros and the, and the Vega team, brilliant work. Thank you so much for helping us put this on and you've done, done a great job. So, so thank you, a partnership between mean, integrations and, and in other areas. So thank you very much. Take care all and uh, have a good rest of the week.